good morning and a warm welcome to all my heartfelt gratitude and hearty welcome to our distinguished host person shri sri kumar superintendent of police cyber crime cell economic offense unit bihar patna our respected principal dr sister m rashmi ac our reverend vice principal dr sister m tanisha ac heads and faculty members of various departments and all the students connected virtually to this online platform it is my privilege to welcome you all for this online session on cyber security awareness challenges and its emerging trends organized by the department of computer applications patna women's college let us start the session with an auspicious note and listen to the prayer song for invoking god's blessings sarveshaam swastir bhavatu sarveshaam swastir bhavatu sarveshaam shantir bhavatu sarveshaam shantir bhavatu sarveshaam purnam bhavatu sarveshaam purnam bhavatu sarveshaam India is witnessing the digital revolution and is gradually implementing changes to make society cashless. Aside from eliminating cash transactions, India is also digitizing a large number of things, whether it's for security, traffic management, or commodities manufacturing. India's economy is taking full advantage of digitization in a variety of disciplines and industries. Advances in information and communication technologies have revolutionized the scientific, educational, and commercial infrastructures developed by the government. The operational stability and security of critical information infrastructure are vital for the economic security of the country. The increasing interconnectivity and accessibility to computer-based systems that are critical to the country's economy are adding to the risk. The evolving nature of the telecommunications infrastructure poses further challenges. Some of the hazards associated with the digital revolution include hacking, interrupting, manipulating and tampering with technology or digital platforms. The latest reports reveal that the overall number of data breaches was up by 68% compared to 2021, and that 33% comprised phishing, smashing, or BEC attacks. Ransomware was next in line on the threat list, accounting for 22% of all cyber attacks and breaches. A cyber attack could target any firm that has confidential material or depends on real-time processing. These threats motivate us to build a strong cybersecurity system in India. An anti-cybercrime agency is required in the country to mitigate the risks of a breach, to raise awareness and highlight the importance of cyber safety 
and digital security. The month of October is marked as National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. In an effort to increase awareness, various governments and the cybersecurity sector have collaborated to promote digital security education and provide everyone with the tools they need to protect their personal information from online crimes. Today, due to high internet penetration, cybersecurity is one of the biggest needs of the world as cybersecurity threats are very dangerous to the country's security. Though government agencies are equipped to deal with cyber crimes, we must take precautions to remain safe. Each one of us should be aware and play a supportive role in strengthening cybersecurity. Multi-factor authentication, use of strong passwords, identification and reporting phishing, and regular upgradation of software are the major aspects to focus on. To throw more light on cybersecurity awareness, its challenges and emerging trends, we have with us Sri, uh, Sushil Kumar, Superintendent of Police, Cyber Crime Cell, Economic Offenses Unit, Bihar, Patna. Sri Sushil Kumar is an IPS officer of the 2012 cadre as, and is an alumnus of Patna University. We are thankful to you, sir, for accepting our invitation and sharing your expertise on cybersecurity awareness for our undergraduate and postgraduate students. Once again, I warmly welcome you, sir, and hope the session would be very fruitful and insightful for all of us. Without further ado, may I now invite Sri Sushil Kumar, sir, to stimulate the session further. Over to you, sir. Good morning, ma'am and all the participants, students, uh, principal sister. I am feeling privileged to be part of your this webinar and that you have given me the opportunity. Am I, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, thank you for giving me opportunity to share my uh, uh, experiences with the cyber crime detection and awareness. Uh, Please allow the screen sharing now. Is it allowed? Yes, sir. It is already allowed. Okay. Let me start when these technical glitches we overcome. Uh, two uh, weeks back, uh, Bhavna ma'am has consulted me and she uh, requested me to uh, deliver a lecture on this topic, cyber awareness and cyber security. Uh, as ma'am has already told in her uh, opening remarks that today is a digital world we are living in. And after COVID, the, uh, our dependence upon all these online type of things has just increased. So uh, there are three parts of uh, cyber understanding, I may say. Uh, the first stage 
sorry to interrupt you, sir, uh, but your screen is not visible uh, over yes, here. Yes, yes, ma'am. I'm just. Yes. Okay. I've just stopped. Is it visible now? Not yet, sir. Okay, ma'am. Let me. So you can stop sharing and yes, no, it is visible. Yes, yes. Just a minute. I think this I think there's some technical glitch from Sir's side by the time he's connecting again. Um, students after the session the last half an hour is for question answer round so if you have any query and doubts you can uh, just uh, switch on your mic and can ask the questions at the end of the session
now everything is okay ma'am yes sir yes sir sorry for the disturbance because uh, that uh, laptop has started updating yes, so uh, today's uh, discussion is basically about cyber security cyber crime and awareness i will try to put my words here what my experience are here with uh, cyber crime unit of economic offense unit so <clears throat> there are i i will i will divide my discussion into three uh, five parts first is the overview second is the vulnerability third is security then awareness the way forward way forward include the initiatives taken by the government so while understanding cyber world we have to understand that at which pace this world is going as uh, bhavana ma'am has already uh, hinted about the pace of the, its growth uh i'm just sharing one thing that uh, the internet live statistic says that uh you can see the figures here that uh, the volume of internet users in the world then the total number of websites working on cyber world uh, emails sent today google searches blog post i've just uh, put this figure only to show that at which pace we are going then the youtube videos viewed per day uh, insta messages and photos uploaded tumblr fact facebook active users more than 3 billion users are there in the world who uses facebook then another figure is around more than 2 lakhs computers sold every day more than 14 lakhs around 15 lakhs smartphones sold every day and we emit the co2 emission is just see that more than 12 lakh tons per day so this is a figure of internet users by country where 1216 figure is there uh india was just second to china so far as the number of internet users are concerned it is a figure of 2016 now the figure has rose up to more than 60 crores this is the figure uh the source is De department of telecommunication the blue line the blue graph shows the mobile users in crores uh 116 lakh plus uh, crore plus mobile users there in india in 2019 and uh, around 63 crore more than 63 crore internet subscribers were there in india the 13 computer emergency response team india uh, in its annual report this is the figure the, you can see that how this pace of security breach incidents is also growing at a very faster pace uh this is the figure of vulnerability of cyber crime desktop laptops uh, so devices are more 70% devices which are desktop and laptops are vulnerable 61% smartphones tablets the figure is there i will not go into the details it already visible more than 30000 website are hacked every day there is a cyber attack every 39 second last year i mean between 2021 and 20 uh, 20 to 21 the increase was more than 50% increase in one year the attacks were increased by around 50% or more and two 
94 million people were affected by the data breaches in 2021. The OTT over the top or IP based contains users. Uh, you know that uh, nowadays after 2015-16 the OTT platform has just risen and uh, it is very popular among the youngsters particularly people below the age of 40 or 45 they are using they are just weaving all their details or serials or web series on these OTT platform this is the figure age wise so uh, while only 31 percent of the population between the age of 18 to 29 uses the orthodox or you say the common uh, mobile networking of cable network and 61 percent of the use they use ott platform to uh, engage themselves on tv or uh, reading films or other entertaining things even the news they used to view on the ip based content uh, devices and platforms the overview of WhatsApp users in India is that uh, around 59% uh, male uses the total number of WhatsApp users of that 59% are male while 41% is female. WhatsApp is being used by uh, many of the government agencies and the government official also are the uh, people who are in the educational field or other fields or uh, professional, they also use WhatsApp network as their means of communication for uh, their official activities also. So it is more in urban area, 71% uh, it is being used in the urban area and town and rural is 29%. Uh, now I will move on to the total cyber crime cases, the pace of the crime. The uh, National Crime Records Bureau, uh, Government of India, uh, estimates that in 2012, there were only 3,477 cyber crime cases. And now it is uh, 44,546 in 2019. You can see that how much it has increased. And uh, you can see uh, the figure in 2016, there was only 12,317 cases reported, while in 2019 it has just jumped to uh, more than three times to 44,546. We are just calculating the figures of last year also, and uh, the pace is the same, even more. Then now we will move the what is cybercrime? Cyber crime is an offense which is committed in full or in part via a computer network or other computer enabled device. Here, there are three terms used. First is computer. Even the phones are computers because they can be used as computing device also. What is computer? Computer is just a device which can compute the network and other computer enabled devices. Other computer enabled devices, I mean that many of the devices which can work with the uh, anyone had, uh, does anyone have any question? My request is to please put your uh, microphone off. So we will now discuss how uh, these crimes will happen. They are happening now. So types of crime, cyber crime. We can categorize them in five. The first is cyber crime against individuals. That includes cyber bullying, cyber stalking, hacking, identity theft, threat, hack profile, and phishing. 
second is crime against property or the financial fraud or financial cyber crimes these include debit and credit card frauds illegal online transactions job frauds lottery frauds insurance frauds etc the third category is cyber crime against organization that is hacking denial of services attack dedicated denial of services attack intellectual property rights ransomware attacks software attacks then the cyber crime against society child pornography is one such crime dark web deep web related crimes are included in that category the last one category is cyber crime against nation website hacking defacement cyber terrorism etc and they come under this category so uh, if you go into the details then who are the person who commit all these crimes the profiling of the cyber criminals shows that 17% of the total perpetrators were internal within the family or the known people external perpetrator were 27% and both mean perpetrator external along with internal they constitute the majority of them like data breach in any organization or the stealing of data especially in the financial organization uh these include the internal perpetrator also because the, in any financial institution if a person or a, an employee is involved in this breaching he easily gets detail of the data which he has or she has the access and then they will transmit it or sell it to the uh, external perpetrators so motive behind cyber crime if we we'll move forward then illicit financial gain is 65% malicious damage to business operations that includes all our basically many of the motives are overlapping it is 54% use system of further attacks 30% espionage by competitors 46 act of war terrorism other country 18 etc uh the expenditure on information security and cyber defenses is 58% of the people of the organization they spend less than 5% of their total profit so uh, the data security or you may say the cyber security is a major concern for a country like india we are using digital platforms in abundance we are using it as a regular feature but we are least concerned about the security features hence the pace of crime or the types of crime which are happening in india is many fold compared to the same set of you may say the database people are using in other countries so uh, we can see the veracity of all these things at 16.4 billion dollar rupees is lost every day and it downs to down to it is down to 1 lakh 90000 per dollar per second so far as the cyber crime scenario is concerned as per ncrb data up tops the cyber crime list because it is the most populous state in india also so if we go into the profiling of the accused in cyber crime the business competitors were highest in number 19.6 neighbors friends relatives 14.7 professional hackers 13 and half uh, 
students 10 percent sexual predators 4.1 percent just control the employees 3.1 percent social media related crime if we'll discuss about it uh, fake profile making fake profile of a person of a victim cyber defamation cyber stalking cyber bullying cyber pornography these all are the social media related crime and women are majority of victims in this category they can shoot the majority what is fake profile more and more people regardless of age and gender are signing up for profiles on online social network there are many social networking sites and it's very popular among the youngsters the people who are the age of or below the 40 or 50 the most common targeted websites are facebook instagram twitter linkedin so there are advice for victims if anyone has made your tech profile and sending a request to your nears and dears your friends your family members your relatives then what is advisable for you as a victim the first step you should take that immediately send blocking or deleting request to the concerned service provider through their support or help desk with regard to the fake profile if you go into the setting of facebook or insta account or for that matter twitter account you will see that there is a security feature there and as well as there is a reporting feature there so you go to the reporting uh, dashboard and you just uh, send request for blocking or deleting the fake profile only by copying that url of the profile and uh, just filling up all other formalities which the service provider is asking and then file it and uh, you just request your nears and dears also or friends also to do the same type of request while going into there you can report about the others profile also if it is found safe then immediately send an email or message to your contacts from uh, any email account not to respond to the fake profiles in any case issue or matter you can uh, send an email or message or WhatsApp message to your friends, relatives who are already there connected with you and these platforms just to not share or uh, accept the request of uh, friendship on these platforms. Then the second step is how to make a complaint. Take a screenshot of the list fake profile wherein URL of the said profile is clearly visible then lodge a complaint your nearest police station describing complete incidents along with the ever mentioned document then save the soft copy of all ever mentioned documents in soft form and provide them to the io on a cd uh, cd and also give hard copy one more feature has just uh, been included by the government of india the Ministry of Home Affairs in 2019, January onwards, uh, of reporting it online. I will discuss that in details in my due course of uh, discussion. The second type of social crime, uh, social media crime is cyber stalking. Cyber stalking is a crime in which a attacker harasses a victim using electronic communication such as email. Instant messaging means general messages, message posted on website or a discussion group. The cyber stalker relies upon the anonymity afforded by the internet to allow them to stalk their victim without being detected. You have to do the same thing while reporting all these type of crimes if it is happening with you. The third type of crime is cyberbullying. 
that is the most widespread social crime against mainly against girls and women it is estimated that around 52% of the young people are cyber bullied and 25% teachers have experienced repeated bullying via cell or internet 33% reported that their bullies issued online threats 55% of all teens who use social media have witnessed outright bullying maybe one time it may be repeated 95% of teens bullied on social media report that others like them have ignored the behavior about 80% of teens regularly use cell phones making it a common medium for cyber bullying when a victim is in bully 65% of teens responded to the bully 35% responding in person many of the bullies are known to the victims 15.4% of the bullied victims they used to avoid going to school or college 4.5% have been in a physical fight with their bully 25% of teens claim to be target of cyber bullying and two third of the teens have witnessed cruel behavior online only 10% of parents of these victims are aware that their teens are targets of cyber bullying my request here is to all the participants who are participating if you yourself or your friend has witnessed such type of offense against them you must uh, take your parents in confidence and you should share your uh, trauma or, or for that matter your the crime against you with them because uh, once you ignore all these things you used to be in trauma or many times it leads to frustration and even suicides in online threats cyber stalking and cyber bullying the advice for victims is that if people think threatened by a statement made online they vote him or her or believe that the threat is credible they should call the police and report on the available platforms of reporting cyber crime including the online cyber crime reporting portal which has been opened by the ministry of home affairs in year 2019 and one more thing is cyber pornography cyber pornography is the act of using cyber space to create display distribute import or publish you can look on the language there is if a person is using cyber space to create to display distribute import or publish image video text audio which are based on nudity or obscene material to send anyone against his or her willingness the words are important if a person is doing any one of them he is being liable to be punished so uh, the child pornography is another aspect of this cyber pornography which is totally banned in our country so if you see any of the such material is being published online you must report if you are direct victim of it or not then one more cyber social media related crime is cyber defamation the term defamation defamation is used to define the injury that is caused to the reputation of a person is more the mental in nature in eyes of a third person so that cyber defamation defamation law new word but the traditional definition of the term defamation is a application or to the cyber applied to the cyber defamation as it involves defamation of a person through a new or virtual medium then we will move on to next type of crime it is email related crime the first is email spoofing 
then phishing, phishing, spamming, email bombing, email fraud. What is email spoofing? Email spoofing is the forgery of an email header so that the message appear to be have appear uh, originated from someone or somewhere other than the actual source. You can see the header how it is being doctored. Then the next is phishing and missing. It is nowadays very common. Phishing is most commonly attempted through email. A typical phishing message will appear to be from a well recognized company that might have a need to know your personal information. It may come from uh, RBI, it may come from SBI in email form. You, won't, you are not aware the what is the website URL of SBI? What is the website URL of RBI? It is not possible for an individual to know all these website URLs. Then there are fair chances that you will get trapped into these uh, traps of perpetrators or the cyber criminals. The second is cyber uh, the, is phishing. Phishing is a telephonic version of phishing. Instead of sending email messages with suspicious link or attachments, criminal attempt to fool you into giving them the some information of phone call. They will, they will call you and send that, look, your uh, Aadhaar number is not updated. So please give us the Aadhaar number and uh, OTP will be sent to you and thus share it with us so can so we can uh, so that we can update your uh, bank account this is one type of thing. second is your nowadays it is very common that your electricity bill will get disconnected we are just uh, giving a message to you you just uh, click on it and uh, after clicking, you have to pay some token money of rupees one or seven or 10 or 15. Then uh, once we will confirm it, then you send the required money, which is pending with the department. So these, uh, uh, by this way, they uh, just dupe uh, individual or person uh, of their money. And uh, uh, the, this is one popular form of financial fraud. Then email bombing. Email bombing is a form of net abuse consisting of sending huge volume of emails to an address in an attempt to overflow the mailbox or overwhelm the server. It is being mainly used by the competitors, the professional competitors. If a tender is being floated and there is a time limit of tender to be submitted, that is 3 p.m. today, then the uh, competitive uh, company, they can use this form of crime by bombing emails on the sites so that uh, no other can send or uh, their proposal of, uh, or uh, you may say the uh, required papers, they, can sub they cannot submit within the time limit. Then spamming, electronic spamming is the use of electronic messages, messaging system to send an unsolicited message that is spam, especially advertising as well as sending messages repeatedly on the same site. Then we'll move on to financial frauds. One type of fraud is ATM scheming. A type of fraud or theft that occurs when an ATM is compromised with a scheming device. You just search on Amazon and you will find the scheming devices online available for purchase. So any perpetrator can easily get access or can easily purchase all these scheming devices in a very low price of I mean, 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000 for that matter, depending on the quality of that scheming devices, they go to a, a loan place, a, a 
where the ATM is being situated and they put this skimming device inside the ATM machine. That is a card reader that can be disguised to look like a part of the machine. The card reader collects the TIM account information and personal identification number that is PIN. And then uh, they just put it out of that uh, machine after some time and then they do transactions and will not aware of all these frauds which has already been taken. Once you get the messages from the bank that your such amount is being debited from your account, then you will feel duped. The second is ATM or debit card exchange. Criminals exchange the ATM or debit card of victims fraudulently in the name of help. This type of crime mainly happens with old age people and the people who are not so familiar with uh, transacting on ATM machines. Then victim's debit card is used for fraudulent transaction. Purchasing from shop and online shopping is done from victim's account and amount is also transferred into other account. Then the credit card fraud, it is also very common frauds nowadays. Credit cards, you will just you go to the malls and you'll find that some people, some marketing executives, they contact you and they say, sir, we are from such company. Please uh, uh, take our credit card. This is such, such facilities. So uh, you, there is a very uh, emerging trend of getting uh, credit cards among the people who use these uh, online transactions. And uh, it, it is now a day's a sign of respect or for that matter, uh, sign of status symbol also. So once you get the credit card you may, and you are not familiar with those credit cards, what you do that you go to the online, you open the Google and you type the helping hands which are online available on getting these credit cards being activated and you easily trapped into their trap because they, there are many such websites, fake websites, which are running on internet in the name of helping to get your credit card being activated. So there are two major pro modus operandi of these credit, credit card frauds. One suspect, the suspect would install key loggers in public computers such as cyber cafes, airports, lounges, or the computer of the victim. Unsuspecting victim would use these infected computers to make online transactions. The credit card information of the victim would be emailed to the suspect. The second modus operandi is petrol pump attendants, workers at retail outlets, hotel waiters, etc. Note down information of the credit card used for making payment at these establishments and they share it with the perpetrators also. Then online shopping fraud, cyber criminals get the details like ATM, debit, credit card number, PIN number, CVV number, one time password that is called OTP of the victim. Uh, shopping is done from the victim's account and rail air ticket is bought by the criminals through IRCTC, Paytm, and other uh, platforms of online. Then the job fraud, that is uh, jobs and uh, employment scams trick you in the handing over your money by offering a guaranteed way of to make. There are many websites which where uh, you can find your job opportunities. So, in continuation to that, the fraudsters have also developed such similar websites, fake websites, and many of the uh, aspiring students or the unemployed students, they get trapped into them and they lose their money. Scammers are the dishonest people who promise you to find a job and ask to pay some amount as token. But after the scammers take your money, 
you get nothing this is a job stuff they will send you the fargy type of uh, job letters also appointment letters also and if by collecting those letters you would go to the company concern then you will find that you have been defrauded one another type of financial fraud is loan fraud in this type of matter the fraudsters lure the victim to provide loan at a reasonably low interest rate or without interest there are many apps nowadays who are giving short term loan to the to the uh, individuals and uh, in name of that they are just defrauding them and then even extort them by saying that uh, look you are a defaulter and we will publish your name online we will publish your name through various means through whatsapp to your nears and dears and you get easily trapped and you pay more and more money to them just to not being uh, so much defamed so this is one another type of fraud uh, among the lot uh, in the in the category of loan fraud that is coming nowadays into picture they ask the victim to provide their bank details and other confidential details and uh, they also give some processing charges and then they get trap of all these of a victim then there are many other type of cyber crime hacking and cracking intellectual property rights violation denial of service dedicated denial of service virus worm attacks web jacking cross site scripting biometrics fraud online sale or illegal articles salami attack trojan key logger cyber terrorism etc hacking is the gaining of access wanted or unwanted to a computer and leaving copying or creating data leaving a trace without the intention of destroying data or maliciously harming the computer the hacker is a person who gains authorized or unauthorized access to a computer without the intention of causing damage so many companies employ hackers to keep a watch or to track the activities of their rival companies then another form of hacking is tracking Cracking is the method by which a person who gains unauthorized access uh, to a computer with the intention of causing damage. Cracker is a person who gains unauthorized access to a computer with the intention of causing damage. Many a times, the hackers be is being employed by the company just to take the security, the checking of security yardsticks. they have already maintained or taken in their company so not always the hacking is illegal but cracking is always illegal then there is intellectual property rights violations the violation of intellectual property rights you know that copyright licensing trademark patent these all things are the intellectual property rights of an individual or a company or product so if while if anybody or any organization is violating or in any infringement is being done with regard to the patents copyrights and trademarks and misappropriation with respect to the trade secrets can be a breach of civil law or criminal law depending on the type of intellectual property involved the jurisdiction and the nature of the action this also is a part of cyber crime then there is denial of service and dedicated denial of service attacks in computing a denial of service attack is a cyber attack in which the perpetrator seeks to make a machine or network resource unavailable to its intended user by temporarily or indefinitely disrupting services of a host connected to the internet so they will bombard the host and they will try to get denial of access of its activities or its facilities to the person who is intended to use it then the advanced form of denial of service is dedicated denial of service it uh, is sought for distributed or distributed denial of service uh, it is a type of 
DOS attack where multiple compromised systems, which are often infected with a trojan, are used to target a single system causing denial of service attack. Then virus and worms attack. Computer virus is a type of malicious program you all know that is malware. The virus has a more than two decade history, or I may say, the journey from virus to malware and to nowadays many other new forms of attacks attacking these software and hardware has been in practice. The computer worm is a standalone malware computer program that replicates itself in order to spread to other computers. Often it uses a computer network to spread itself, replying on security failures on the target computers to access it. There is a large and very, you may say, established network of sale of illegal items, including narcotics substances, narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances, illegal arms, uh, many of the data as individuals data or the company's data. So uh, this all is being done on the dark web. You must uh, the students of computer application department, they must have heard about the dark web and deep web and uh, the dark web is it works on the browser that is Tor. That is Tor. It has full form the Onion browser or the Onion router. So in this in this type of uh, crime, the dark web is much smaller than the deep web. It is made of, of different kind of websites that sells drugs, weapons, and even higher assassins. These are hidden networks avoiding their presence on the surface wave. Surface wave is the wave on which we all are working and its URL are tailed upon with onion. Onion, you have seen the onion, it has many layers. So these uh, routers or these browsers have many layers and uh, you cannot reach easily to the source uh, of that or the origin of that uh, particular transaction or communication. Next is salami attack. It's a series of minor computer crimes that together result in a large crime. Typically, this type of crime is hard to detect and trace. For example, a fraud activity in a bank where an employee steals a small amount of funds on federal account can be considered a salami attack. This was all about the crimes. Uh, there are many other crimes like uh, ransomware and other crimes which are very much in practice nowadays. In ransomware, the perpetrator take access of the computer application and the computer network of the victim or his company. And then all the data is get encrypted by the perpetrator, the criminal. And they, then they send a message via mail or uh, IM services to the victim that look, your whole system has been encrypted and we have the decryption Key, we have encrypted it. If you will pay such amount or like, say 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs or depending on the on the size of that uh, organization or the financial abilities of that uh, or the financial uh, stakes involved in that uh, encryption and they easily get access uh, of money uh, because they only uh, decrypt it once they get the extorted money paid to them. Then another type of crime which is nowadays very popular, I mean in the, in the 
in terms of criminals is sextortions. In this type of crime, the people get WhatsApp video calling uh, from unknown number. And if you will uh, engage in those callings, you accept that and start making call, accepting that call. Then on the other side, some girl, and if a girl is here in this side, victim side, then a boy, they will uh, call you and send some very unusual or you may say filthy things with you and they just record all these things and uh, even morph your uh, sometimes morph your photos or videos and then start threatening you that look your uh, these uh, obscene videos or photos are with us and you just pay such amount otherwise we will uh, publish it or we will send it to your family members your wife husband brother sisters in uh, people get threatened and they usually give money to these perpetrators so now we will move on to the security aspect of uh, the cyber world that is the cyber security tips i just wanted to share with you uh, the first thing is always keep a strong password for both wireless and broadband routers. Many of the government agencies are engaged in giving all these awareness tips, propagating all these security features among the people, especially the college or school going students, teachers, servicemen, professionals, and other old age and even the household persons or the, uh, or the female who are living in their houses. So, So these are the short videos, I have just uh, showed you one such video, are easily available uh, online. Uh, it has all been developed by the CDAC, CDAC is a government of India agency, the full form is Center for Development of Advanced Computing. It has around 16 branches all over India, even Patna, the Patna CDAC branch is just opened few years back during the COVID time. So CDAC and ISCA is one such agency which is involved or engaged in uh, propagating all these security measures uh, nationwide. It is uh, uh, a CDAC agency. So these all are the government efforts which are being done by our government just to propagate the details of the security features once you take. So first is hide your professional information. Look, uh, you can see on the screen that such uh, uh, cartoons are being made uh, by the agencies just to make you aware about it, how these all activities or the breaches are being done and uh, how can you be safe by uh, keeping in your mind or in practice all these security features. So while uh, you, you must hide your personal information, what is the tendency among the people that when you are making your profile on social media sites like uh, Facebook, there is a uh, tendency to, a common tendency 
to display your date of birth, your place of living, or your mobile number also. So please never do that. And if you are sharing all these things, there is a feature in those uh, social media uh, sites or the social media platform that you can put a security feature on that or you can restrict it your to visible to only you or your friends also. So you use all these things. Second thing I will advise that you use two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication while uh, you are on Facebook, you are on you are on Gmail, you are on WhatsApp, Twitter, Insta. These all platforms have such security features. So while you uh, use all these platforms, you just uh, secure yourself by enabling these two-factor or multi-factor authentication techniques. This is very easy. There is all guide. It is all being guided in your uh, platform itself. So uh, you can use it and get yourself safer what in which state you are nowadays. Second is be aware of your data. So there is one such uh, sequence which we will make, which I just want to share with you. And it, uh, Tanvi is a character which is addicted, addicted to taking selfies. She has the latest Android phone with good camera quality. She had clicked many candid photos, also some private photos with her friend. One day she accidentally drops the phone and she is unable to switch it on. She visits an unauthorized mobile shop and asks him to repair. She thought that her photos and other data are safe and she has locked them with a password. Hardly did she know that passwords can be easily broken with hacking software. Here I just want to share one more thing that uh, what is the tendency of us that we use our, we, we, we use very common passwords. We use our date of birth, year of birth as our password. And these crackers or hackers, they get easy access to all those passwords. So please your, uh, keep your passwords tricky. Then the shopkeeper, after repairing the phone, accesses her gallery and takes a copy of her private photos. After a few days, she gets a call from her friend mentioning that her photos are they have gone viral and getting shared by many groups. This is one type of crime which can happen with you. So be aware of your data and never share all these things or uh, go to such unauthorized shops for repairing all those things. Then VBR of revenge photography. There is one such more sequence which is being depicted here in form of these all are the awareness material which are available on the government sites. One more uh, such thing which has been made available, awareness poster, is just think before you click the link. Uh, I have already mentioned that some financial crimes are happening by providing such links and Compelling you through their means of communication skills to get your link clicked, and you will easily be defrauded by clicking these links. Because by clicking these links, the many of the remote access apps like AnyDesk, like uh, TeamViewer, is being installed on your mobile phone or your computer. And all your and the perpetrator will get access of all your data. They will get access of your communication device, your Android device, or your computer device. So please think before you click the link. Then be aware, aware of Wi-Fi hacking. Don't use Wi-Fi, which is widespread available or open Wi-Fi. 
these are dangerous be aware of camera hacking avoid pairing bluetooth in public places especially for the first time disable booting from external media in pc and enable bios password what to do when your system is compromised don't panic isolate your computer from the network shut down and remove the hard drive and connect it to other computer as a non bootable drive scan your drive from infection and malware preserve the log information resident of the compromised computers backup reload the operating system from trusted media and install updates reinstall antivirus anti spying spyware and other security software prior to any other programs scan your data backup disks for viruses before you copy them back to your computer make a complete backup of your system frequently then please turn off your bluetooth when not in use these are some other things already i have discussed the sextortion online sextortion how it happens then tips to safeguard yourself against online sextortions never share any compromising event images post videos to anyone enable privacy and security features on social media platforms turn off your web cameras while not in use never allow even anyone to capture any private photo or intimate activities bachcho ke internet safety ke liye panch tips pehla जानकारी जैसे कि आपके घर का पता स्कूल का नाम और फोन नंबर किसी को भी ना दें। दूसरा अनजान लोगों को अपने फोटोज ना भेजिए तीसरा अपने पेरेंट्स के सिवा सभी से अपने पासवर्ड को प्राइवेट रखें और शेयर ना करें चौथा बहुत सारे वेबसाइट और यू आर एल के एड्रेसेज आपने देखे होंगे इसमें ये भारत सरकार की इनिशिएटिव है और साइबर स्वच्छता और जो हमारे बहुत सारी एजेंसी जिस पे काम कर रही हैं उनके द्वारा तैयार किए गए छोटे 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 वीडियो क्लिप्स हैं और बहुत सारे मैसेजेस हैं बहुत सारे पोस्टर्स भी हैं यहाँ बिहार में भी इकोनॉमिक ऑफेंस यूनिट की तरफ से हम हर रोज एक ऐसा ही पोस्टर अवेयरनेस का बनाते हैं और व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप पर डालते हैं हमारा एक एडुकेशनल व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप भी है मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि पटना वेमेंस कॉलेज से भी अगर कोई एक आदमी उस ग्रुप का मेंबर हो जाए तो हम लोग उनको जोड़ लेंगे सो दैट वी विल सेंड आवर पोस्टर्स डेली टू दोज ग्रुप्स एंड आफ्टर एक्सेसिंग दोज पोस्टर्स यू कैन इजिली शेयर इट इन योर कॉलेज ग्रुप्स ऑल्सो सो नाउ यू विल डिस्कस अबाउट द सेफ्टी टिप्स फॉर किड्स अनदर टेन टू फिफ्टीन मिनट्स आई विल कंटिन्यू देन क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन विल स्टार्ट so for children it is that always check the authenticity of a person before you accept uh, it is applicable to other people also but mainly to the children because uh, they are easy easy victims or uh, the perpetrator can easily get them victimized before you accept a friend request on a social networking sites because the age of uh, opening a social media account in in all the social media sites except twitter is 13 for twitter it is 16 so if a child or a teenager is 13 years old majority of them have such social media accounts 
so they have to be more cautious while uh, uh, while just practicing all these accounts and uh, being active on those accounts never give out your correct accurate detail accurate details like name address phone numbers email ids to strangers online always share your trip to your friends family and emergency contact number while traveling alone in cabs never respond to unknown persons communication or conversation or email on internet never open download email attachment from strangers your brain is the best place to store your password so the stronger your password the more security is your information what we do that we get all our passwords stored in our mobile device once it is stolen then the perpetrator or the criminal get access of all our passwords so this is one another hazard which uh, can happen to you then use content filters to prevent access to websites that are considered unsuitable to you before staying in a hotel room check the room thoroughly then always use licensed operating system antivirus and internet security anti malware and parental control software for safety always check hidden cameras before using a changing room in malls shops etc always use secret a uh, secured uh, website which starts from https there are two types of websites mainly in india we see that some of the websites uh, starts with http they are unsecured and https is secured website so please try to open only those websites which are uh, which open with https be careful while doing online shopping and always busy uh, buy a, a trusted e-commerce sites only always log log out your computer while leaving never install a known or unsolicited software in your computer or for that matter any of the uh, computer never devices if you are a victim of identity theft then at immediately report to the concerned authority police or the online system of reporting never share your pictures or videos to strangers or through online always close other applications while doing online transactions don't open do not open forward reply to clicks on links attachment in unsolicited emails then don't advertise your location hangouts anywhere that you are away from home to avoid facing alert and be secure from it be suspicious if you receive any email with urgent request for personal and financial information never send send sensitive details like password or credit card numbers to email use different passwords for different accounts and change them at regular intervals be aware of job scams money scams lottery frauds email lotteries check your bank statements on regular basis and if you find any unauthorized transactions or any discrepancies immediately report to them them to their concerned authorities never meet a stranger alone whom you know online only in whatsapp restricts access to your profile picture by enabling my contacts option in privacy setting then your profile picture will only be seen by the contacts which are stored in your phone do not provide a pin to other account inform another uh, in account information through telephone unless you initiated the call wishing we have already discussed in a type of crimes uh, check the privacy settings for all social media platform always use the latest updated browsers never auto connect to open wifi network in public places we have already discussed if you suspect any potential virus related situation then immediately report it to the concerned authority activate your mobile number uh, mobile phone with a strong pin code which is tough hard to predict never share your mobile devices with stranger and last but not the least report fake profiles harassments bullying help to the website's report page so uh, again there are five internet safety tips we have already discussed i will not go into the details of them
regions for cyber bullying which already we have discussed 61% is appearance academic achievement 25% race 17% sexuality 15% financial status 15% religion 11% and other regions 20% then we will move on to government initiatives here i will share one thing i just want to show the website or the url or the platform which is being initiated by government of india this is the cyber crime portal So, okay. So this is the National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal. Is it visible? Okay. Uh, uh, your PowerPoint is visible still. So, uh, can you see the portal also? No. The portal is not visible. Uh, your PowerPoint slide is visible. Okay, ma'am. I'm just. I think now it is visible. Yes, sir. Now it is visible. Okay. So this is the National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal, which has been initiated by Government of India, Ministry of Home Affairs, in year 2019. It is very uh, popular nowadays because lakhs of people are reporting their victims are reporting cyber crime uh, so government of india has initiated many in his, uh, things in this regard uh, as uh, ma'am was mentioning there that there must be an anti cyber crime agency nationwide so uh, our government is already working upon that and uh, in continuation to those efforts, this National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal was initiated in uh, 2019. Firstly, uh, it has two uh, parts. The first is reporting of women and child related crimes. You can see that uh, I have just uh, put my cursor there. So it has uh, this type of crime, it is, if it happens with anyone, there are two types of reporting. First is report anonymously, and second is report and track. Uh, you can see that uh, here is a red uh, button, file a complaint. You have to accept that complaint and you have to move further. These are the details. This is the form you have to fill up. And uh, uh, as I have opened the reporting, uh, the, the, the uh, platform of reporting anonymously. So, uh, in many of the social media crime or crime against women, women victim, they don't want to get it uh, themselves exposed to uh, or uh, the society, and uh, they try, they rather prefer to be anonymous. So, government has facilitated this also uh, while reporting this type of. Uh, crime, the obscene photo, video, or the content will be deleted by the government uh, and no FIR will be made, but the content will be deleted. So in every state, there is one such nodal officer who is responsible for accepting all these type of in Bihar, I am the nodal officer. 
and the second form of uh, reporting is report and track you can file a complaint and you can track that where the your complaint has gone so all the police stations of bihar are linked with this portal and uh, it directly goes to them and at patna at economic offences in cyber crime unit we monitor the progresses made by doj organization or the police stations there is another type of crime reporting that is the financial fraud and other frauds this is called report other cyber crime it comes under the purview of report other uh, cyber crime in this also you have to file a complaint i have just opened the that is create citizen login you have to make your login id and then we proceed in this type of reporting uh, portal uh, one more uh, facility the government has provided one. that is reporting financial fraud that portal is already within this uh, network or this portal and in that uh, uh, if you you have been defrauded by a financial fraudsters fraudster then you all the details with uh, just uploading the transaction ids and other things to the uh, portal and in many of the cases if you report in time then it is a fair chance that your money will be halted by the concerned agency or the bank or the service provider then after due course after the proper reporting of or proper institution of fir we you will get back your money so this is one major uh, initiative by government of india the other is uh, uh, the platform of i4c that is the central platform indian cyber crime coordination center and uh, under this the government of india had just uh, uh, started a 24 into 7 helpline number the helpline number is 1930 and the helpline number uh, is 24 into 7 you can call on that number and uh, you can get help in reporting all this cyber crime or any type of crime which is being reported against you so now i will again move on to my yes then what are the government initiatives i have already mentioned uh so cyber crime can be reported offline and online also this is all what we have already discussed then the offenses and relative re relevant panel sections so it is not of much use to you but you should know that that uh, if anything happens with you misusing a uh, if anybody pan, uh, publishing or transmitting material depicting children in sexually explicit explicit act then section 67b of uh, it act 2000 amended in 2008 is uh, applicable so uh, these are uh, many things which is much of use for the policeman or the law enforcing agency so this was all about uh, all from us my side uh, i think uh, i have uh, taken one uh, hour 15 minutes of your time so thank you very much uh, now question and answer uh, ma'am i request you to please uh, start those that section thank you Yes, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now we'll be having a question round session. I would request all the student who's having any doubt or any query, if there is there in the mind, 
please take help of your hod and please unmute yourself and put put up your question you can take questions on the chat section also if uh, anyone has question they can put it in the chat section and then i will try to answer it good afternoon so good afternoon uh, so my question is uh, like we are students uh, get uh, we students get your voice is not clear rajiv sir i think your voice is uh, i think some internet issue is there yes good afternoon sir we are from amm department and our students is having question Good afternoon, sir. I did not understand prop. Yes. Yes, please. Sir, I did not understand properly about DDoS. Can you please explain it again? Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Please repeat again your question. Uh, can you talk about DDoS? She is asking about DDoS. Ah, uh, that is the distributed denial of service attack. <laughs> that is the distributed denial of service attack is an, a type of attack uh, so what is its function it is mainly uh, being done by the competitive uh, companies it is not uh, against individual uh, if a company the rival companies they do use all these type of uh, attacks to avoid uh, or to restrict the other company to get involved in the competitive market okay sir thank you thank, thank you sir i have uh, some questions in the chat box that uh, uh, one question is that sir if any girl can uh, get rape threatening messages where should we report uh, i have already mentioned that you firstly you report to the crime against women and children section of the national cyber crime reporting portal that is ncrp portal and then you contact the local police station also uh, there you get, get your fir being registered and certainly the action will be taken the second question is uh, on the chat box is what we will do when we complain on cyber security website just a minute i am just reading out the question after that i will take your question Uh, what we will do when we complain on cyber security websites and no any act taken action taken on cyber security team online as well as offline uh, here you uh, do one thing that uh, if you uh, report any of the sites which are not uh, proper or which are publishing or dis or displaying some such things which which come under this preview of it act you just uh, complain online all these type of complaints are being monitored by us and what we do that we send a notice to the concerned website uh, domain i mean the uh, owner of that website and uh, the concerned uh, platform to take down these type of messages these type of videos certainly the action takes place many a times we also face some difficulty that uh, we also face some difficulty that many of the servers are outside india and where the law of our land 
does not apply. So uh, we have taken up this matter with the government of India agencies also. And uh, sooner the Data Security Act, uh, I hope that in year or uh, six months or in a year, the Data Security Act will come in force. Then only we will be better in, in a better position to deal with all these type of things. So please, someone was asking question. Good afternoon, sir. So my question is, like if we get calls from uh, advertisement companies regarding admissions, and we have never shared the information to them, then also they know all our information regarding uh, education. So how could we stop them? So uh, look, uh, there are two aspects of it. You have all, uh, you have, uh, your question is that you have not shared any of your data with those or advertising, advertising agencies and they call you and then they engage you in their activities. The, uh, you know that big data analytics is one such thing that many of your data or even our data is being shared by the companies on which we are uh, using uh, our, uh, we are engaging online. So big data analytics is such thing. So my request is that never share your uh, sacred data or private data on that. If they are uh, repeatedly giving you calls that block them, or if even then they are just uh, giving call from different uh, numbers, then you re you can report to the platform also. Good afternoon, sir. My question is, sometimes we are in public space and someone tries to click our picture without our consent and those pictures can be posted online. So what we can do in such a situation? You first uh, try to stop them by doing all these things. If he, if he or she or they don't hear to you, then you consult the concerned agency, the police, and if even it is being seen by you that after some times that the, your picture has been taken without your consent, then you report. Thank you, sir. So there are questions about that some of the sites are asking for money yes. and other, other girl, just a minute, girl has written that, uh, uh, I'm a student of PG Biot employee, so my question is that sometimes we don't share our personal bank details OTP, but we also get to hear that some money is transferred. In those cases, I have already mentioned one type of crime that uh, uh, they used to uh, share their a link to you and uh, sometimes or other you uh, click those links in curiosity even, and then your data will be compromised by installing the, the perpetrator installed the remote uh, apps, access app like any desk or, or team viewer. So in that case, even without uh, uh, sharing your OTP, your money will be debited. Yes, there is an office of cyber cell in Patna. It is uh, just near Raj Bhavan. Uh, did the, we have just uh, opened a new building and uh, with more facilities. So uh, we are just planning to have a cyber grievance cell for women and children also. Very soon we will start it uh, for the uh, women and children or the girls student especially who are victim of such uh, uh, online harassment. So we are in process of that. Hope in next few months we will start it. Yes. Yes, please. Yes, now you are done. So she is asking salami attack. Salami attack. I have already discussed that uh, if a bank employee, if a if a uh, cashier of a bank, he has access of all the accounts and some pretty accounts he is debiting from individuals 
uh, or the sundry account there are many sundry accounts uh, if you are a student of uh, commerce you will get to know that what these sundry accounts are so these accounts the he will or she will debit money from uh, these sundry accounts and then uh, the amount is so low that uh, so less that uh, one cannot notice it and uh, if he has debited account from 50 people then for him or her the amount is handsome but the victims um, are unable to understand that they have been defrauded this is salam attack sir does it happens in banks only pardon sir does it happens in bank only mainly in banks there are many other uh, uh, private banks or private payment apps or private payment groups are there so it can happen in any of the uh, organization where these financial transactions are going on so uh, one has asked that uh, how much time it takes when we report uh, online so in uh, online crime the maximum time in limit is 7 days for the crime against women and children and for other uh, crimes it may take some times because many times what it happens that many people from other states or other jurisdiction they used to uh, complain because they don't know the jurisdiction actual jurisdiction so in that uh, case the complaint get transferred i mean those uh, types of complaints uh, more time uh, is been taken some repetition is there so not audible not audible am i audible sir No, there is echoing in that uh, room. Echo in that room. So your sound is very echoed. So one question is that: uh, Can you give us more information about dark web? Basically, dark web web is a separate thing. Uh, so I have already uh, given a small account of that. That. Uh, it's a platform where the surface web is does not work and the proxy servers are the medium of communication uh, so that uh, the law enforcing agency cannot get details uh, or access of those transactions or communication so for dark web some other time we can put in because it will take at least one hour good afternoon sir my name is monica i wanted to ask uh, when we go and complain to police stations sometimes they just give warning and uh, the they are, they just give warning and after that the bullying just continues so what should be done in such situation in such a situation uh, we also witness such things many of the girls or victims they come to our offices also uh, so this is the problem with the police force what we have done in this regard that uh, we have started awareing them teaching them right at the level of their induction in our force so we have introduced the cyber awareness and cyber security and cyber crime course in the basic training of our constables also uh, in sub inspector rank in deputy sp rank we have already introduced it but uh, from last year we have introduced it for constables also we just also want to make them aware because it's a new phenomena so many a times they feel that it is not at all a crime so this is the stigma with us uh, this is the problem with us so we are just trying to overcome this and uh, for this at economic offences unit we have started a full five day training program and we have already trained around 2000 uh, police personnel i know this number is very less around 1 lakh police personnel are here in our state so it will take some time so in those cases you can directly uh, give a mail to 
my office. My office mail address is cybersell-bih at nic.in. At last, I will write it down. That is cybersell-bih at nic.in. We will pursue your case if any case, such case is there. Any more question? Good afternoon, sir. So as you have suggested that we should not uh, uh, exchange our genuine data on any social media site. But as a student of MCA, uh, our professors or the seniors have suggested that we should have a LinkedIn account. On a LinkedIn account, we have to share our genuine data from qualification to our personal data as well. So what are the preventive measures we should take in order to be safe uh, on the LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn or any other social media site? I have already mentioned that every social media site, LinkedIn is a social media site, there are some security features with them. In, but sir, and, uh, the, most of the security features have been provided in premium account. And if, uh, if as a student, uh, I'm not able to uh, uh, fetch or purchase those uh, premium amount, then what should we take? Uh, the preventive measures have, we should take to be safe on that particular platform. As a preventive measure, I would suggest that you just, firstly, you uh, take this matter with your teacher. I think that your teacher is also with us. Uh, because LinkedIn is a semi-professional type of account, uh, social media platform. Uh, so there is a problem with such, such problem with LinkedIn. So uh, my request to, be, to your teachers also that uh, please restrict to the minimum uh, information that can be shared on that. Because in order to, uh, in order to, uh, in order to, uh, uh, ask about employment opportunities to different uh, to different companies or approach to different companies. We have to uh, make a, a, any LinkedIn account, so it is important for our uh, employment ba background for as well. So, uh, what should we do, sir? In that case, if it is necessary, in that case, you be cautious and please uh, uh, go for the security tips, and you should be more aware and cautious while dealing all these things. You don't reply to any such uh, things. We have, I've already mentioned that you just go for only such site which have HTTPS type of uh, initiation with them, uh, URL and other security features or the awareness features you can go. All these awareness material is available online. So on the government website of uh, CDAC, of ISCA, of uh, Ministry of uh, Electronics and Information Technology, that is MITE, and on other, also on other law enforcement agency sites. So you should remember those uh, precautions and uh, make it a practice. I can only suggest this. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, I have a question for related to cybersecurity. What are the most important assets, assets to cybersecurity? How we protected them? Important assets. Yes, yes. The first asset is please share a minimum of your personal details. Second is you please keep your password tricky and change it, change it at regular interval. Third is don't resp respond or uh, don't reply to any of the unknown or suspicious or malicious looking sites, individuals or such platforms. Thank you. And I want to ask that if someone is getting threatening messages or a unwanted message from account, then how many reports should uh, is needed to take an action against that account? Only one report is needed. Only one such report is needed. If not filed any uh, complaint against that account. Just we generally report that account on social media. 
अच्छा ओके 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 इफ एनी वन हैज मेड सर्कल सो प्लीज मिनिमम फाइव टू टेन अकाउंट रिपोर्ट आर नीडेड फॉर दैट फॉर टेकिंग डाउन दैट फेक प्रोफाइल और दैट कॉन्टेंट so you just uh, report yourself and ask your your friends and relatives also to report them there is one another feature in social media sites that is of poking if a person is get reported many a times then uh, uh, some uh, he or she uh, then they ask your friends or the perpetrator ask their friends to get them poked so try to try to just to save themselves from being deleted or from from being blocked so try to uh, report as many as you can within a short interval of time i think i answered your question query thank you okay good morning sir my question is that even if we report many of the times and actions are not being taken then what measures we can do what you do what you do that you uh, report on the cyber crime reporting portal okay and there we will get access of that and uh, we will pursue your case okay thank you sir in that case good afternoon sir so my question is that if i am uh, filing a complaint that uh, then how i will came to know that uh, my complaint is being processed or not and uh, how i can check what's the status of that complaint because do many you, complaints are unfilled you, they are not being processed if also you, okay if you uh, put your or uh, complain online then there is a uh, track mechanism there you can report and track also you can track that uh, on 18th of uh, october if you have filed a complaint then after some times you can track that whether this complaint has gone to the police station or not so it is all visible on the portal you can track easily there if you report to the online then a transaction id will be delivered on your registered mobile number okay that uh, transaction id or acknowledgement id is for all future communication or tracking of your complaint okay okay sir thank you sir i think we have taken enough of the questions sir i have other questions also yes sir so we have moved to the end of the session honorable sri sushil kumar ips respected principal dr sister m rashmi ac respected vice principal dr sister m tanisha ac honorable teachers and dear student i on behalf of entire organizing team deem it a great honor and privilege to propose vote of thanks on this occasion first and foremost i like to thank the almighty god for making this session a resounding success a sincere gratitude to our eminent resource person shri sushil kumar ips superintendent of police cyber crime and economic offense bihar for not only taking out the time from his busy schedule to grace this occasion but also imparting us the knowledge and bringing awareness among us about the emerging need of cyber security so you have showed the different forms of cyber threats and how to come out of it if we are trapped also sharing different frauds and scams related to digital transactions and email information sharing existence of dark web deep web and different extortions are being cleared on the session thank you sir for clearing our concepts and enhancing our understanding pertaining to cyber security and how to identify different frauds thank you for sharing the tips for security and the cyber uh, security portal where the victims can file the complaint and take further help you have definitely made this session most valuable and knowledgeable i'm sure our student and we the teachers at the end are now aware of how to keep our data safe thank you so very much for such a elaborate session Thank you. Now I extend my deepest thank to our principal for our unstinted support, guidance, and encouragement in all our efforts. My heartfelt thank to the heads of various department and dear student for attending this webinar and making it successful. Lastly, I would like to thank Dr. Bhavna Sinha, HOD, Department of Computer Application, and the entire organizing team for arranging this webinar on cyber awareness, which is indeed a need of the hour. I'm sure. 
we all have gained valuable information and we now know how to keep protected from online threats and fraudulence. Wishing all us safe working on digital platform and keep ourselves safe from any unauthorized access. Once again, thank each one of you for joining today. Thank you very much. And the feedback link has been shared on this chat box. All the students are requested to fill this feedback form. Thank you also. Thank you, sir.